it can sound righteous to say God wants you to be straight. But I've yet to read anything in the 66 books of the scriptures that implies that. Welcome to Barion Babs Bain the Now. I'm your host, Vali Chikuni. We begin Jack Hill Perry. Jack Hill Perry is assumed to be an expert to respond to all questions that people decide to ask her whenever it comes to biblical sexuality. And for some reason, she does not, she doesn't hold to biblical sexuality, and she's not the only one. Uh, there's a video that I covered already, so let's hear what 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 has transpired with her this time around when she was asked a similar question. Okay, so they were on a panel, and there was a question from an audience. So without further ado, I present to you Jack Hill Perry. All right, I have a gay daughter. I love her, and I want to keep our relationship strong. I pray for her constantly. She is engaged to her partner. Is there anything else I can do? Um, hmm. the, her need is, is bigger than her sexuality. Um, because I, I, think I so, want you to say that statement again. Okay. That, let's, let's take that again. Her need is bigger than her sexuality. And I say that because we can sometimes make the gayness the big thing that we focus on and not seeing that the sexual practice is coming from a heart that needs to be renewed. And the renewal of the heart won't necessarily mean a change in sexual preference. The renewal of the heart means that this person will prefer God over everything else. So I think if you just focus on the most obvious sin, then you miss praying more specifically for the need. Okay, so uh, did you hear what she just said? Okay, everything that she says there does sound good, and then you can hear people are uh, clapping because it definitely does sound good. Even Beth Moore was like, "Can you please say that again?" Okay, so what is Jack saying? She is saying that the need, in, you know, it is true. The statement to say like, "Okay, her need." is more than her sexuality. Okay, fine. But she does not stop there. Or she continues to say that what she needs is a change of heart. But even if she has the change of heart, it does not mean that her sexual preferences is going to change. You understand what I'm saying? So, biblically speaking, what do we mean when somebody has a change of heart? Okay, you used to have a heart of stone. You no longer have a, st a heart of stone. Now you have a heart of flesh, right? So God has given you a heart of flesh. You are no creature. You are no person. So your desires have to be matching your um, the new person that you have become. Okay, because the former things are gone. Behold, the new things are here. But every time that Jackie is asked this question, this is how she does respond and it definitely does sounds good but it's not biblical so pay attention because she continues she um she opened the scriptures to give an answer using the scriptures which i which i welcome okay because all this is not about what she thinks or what anybody else think for that matter it's scriptures right so she's she's gonna go to the scriptures so let's listen in to what she says flesh instead of a heart of stone. Um, and so that's what I would say. I, I think another thing I would say is that pray in the direction of Paul's uh, counsel to the church in Corinth when he, he talks about um, fleeing sexual immorality. And he says, or do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor men who practice, practice, practice. So he's not talking about nouns. He's talking about verbs, adjectives. He's talking about people who are practicing the behavior, not experiencing the attraction. The distinction is important. Nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but you were washed. Notice he didn't say, but you were straight. He, he didn't say, but you were heterosexual, but you were married. Like, that, that's not the prayer. The prayer is that you are washed, meaning pray that they'll be cleansed from their sins. But you were sanctified. Pray that the Lord will set, set them apart and make them holy. And, and, and then he says, you were justified. Pray that the Lord will make them righteous and remove their guilt and reconcile them to the Father. And how does this happen? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. The simple fact that it happens by the Spirit of God means that you don't have the capacity to save your child. You don't, 
you're not a savior but you can pray to the savior that he would save. And so that's what I would say. Be encouraged that, that God is, his, his arm is not too short to save. So you ain't got to manipulate people. You ain't got to be like, be sad and all the things, but don't stay there. Because if he rose from the dead, then surely there is more hope available than you can ever imagine. Okay, so uh, you, so did you hear what she said, right? We're going to get to the scriptures. The question that was posed to Jackie the woman was saying she has a daughter. Uh, the daughter is gay and she's engaged. How should she be handling that situation? It's true. The, the woman cannot save her daughter. That's absolutely correct. Okay? So that's not the issue that I'll be having. However, the scripture that she is using, she is saying, let's just pull up the scripture over here, okay? Um, that way, uh, you know, we are going by according to the scriptures, okay? Everything that she says definitely sounds good. But this is, you know, 1 Corinthians uh, 1, 6, okay? Oh, do you not know that the unrighteous will not inherit the kingdom of God? That is a question mark that Paul is asking his audience, okay? Unrighteous, unrighteous people are not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So you tell me. What are the descriptions of people who practice unrighteousness? Huh? According to Romans 1, people who are caught up in this lifestyle, they are not going to go to heaven. That's not me. That's what the Bible teaches. So notice what Jackie did. Okay, she said this is the prayer that Paul is giving to the Corinthians. And she, uh, Jackie continues to say that Paul is praying for them because they were washed they were justified. She does not see any way where Paul is telling them that uh, they should become straight. Think it this way, okay? What does the scripture say? If somebody, he who steals, let him no longer steals, right? Which means if you, what are you supposed to be doing now? You're supposed to be working with your hands. Stop stealing, start working with your hands, okay? What happens if you have anger, okay? You, you have anger issues. What are you supposed to put on? Uh, you know, uh, get rid of anger and put on patience. So it's not just a matter of you or uh, uh, is saying that you shouldn't be straight. That's her position. She always holds to this situation, right? What is the opposite? Okay, if somebody is is, uh, is gay, right? We understand that's that's a natural desire because he who created them created them male and female, and the God created them. Uh, heter um, being heterosexual is what that's God design. Anything that is contrary to that, it's against God design. So when somebody is reforming, when somebody is changing, what do you want that person to do? We want the person to revert to what God has designed things to be. Not what I want or what the culture says. But she does not believe in that. So let's continue to uh, read the scriptures over here, okay? It says, Do not be deceived, neither the sexually immoral, no idolaters, no adulterers, no effeminate, no homosexuals, no thieves, no the greedy, no drunkards, no revirers, no swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. All, everything it, uh, Paul has already explained. And then verse 11, okay, this is where she plugged in her defense of the scripture, which does not hold any water. And I read verse 11, and such were some of you. And such were some of you. What does that mean? Some of you here, you used to do all these things that Paul has listed. But you were washed. What does that mean if they were washed? If, if they were, if they were uh, idolaters, if they were practicing homosexuality, if they were practicing greed, if they were thieves. According to the scriptures, they were washed. What does that imply? What does that even mean? And if they were washed, which means those things were washed away from them. If they used to be thieves, they're no longer thieves anymore. If they used to practice them, they're no longer practicing it. Why? Because they were washed. But you were sanctified. Okay? Not only were they washed, but they were sanctified. And not only were they sanctified, they were what? They were justified. Okay? Justified in the name of what? In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and in the spirit of our God. So to me... For Jackie to use this scripture to buttress her position, meaning that, uh, you know, uh, be praying, the, uh, your daughter, um, she can stay there. Her heart might not change it. No, 
That's not what the scripture is teaching, let alone the scripture that she has quoted. According to the scripture itself, it actually says, right? You were washed, you were sanctified, you were justified, right? So what happens? This is justification. This is what happens the moment that you come to know Christ, okay? You, uh, God has to open your eyes, give you the gift of faith. Regeneration precedes faith. So justification is something that takes place one time. Okay, so that moment that you were justified, now as you're walking through life, you're being sanctified. Okay, till one day we're going to obtain our glory. So what what does it mean, somebody being sanctified? It means, okay, you used to steal, you're no longer stealing. So now you're sanctified, right? You're pursuing holiness. You are growing. So you are killing the deeds. Um, you're fighting sin. Okay, now you're walking in the flesh. You are a new creature in Christ. You are a new person. So there is no way you can be dragging the things that you used to do before you came to Christ. So if, so if you're telling me, according to the scriptures, it's clear. They were thieves. They were idolaters. They were practicing homosexuality. All these type of the sins, all those things were washed away. Now they're new creation. And this is what Paul is saying. It's for her to say that, oh, it's not telling me that now you're, you're married. Now that you're uh, heterosexual, no jacket. That's not the point. The, the point that you're trying to make does not hold any water. Yes, the goal is absolutely that. If somebody struggles with homosexuality, what is the goal? The goal is for them to be heterosexual. Why? Because that is what God has designed. Because nobody is born gay. Okay, biblically speaking, nobody's born gay, and biologically, scientifically speaking, nobody's born like that. That is the sinful tendency that people do have. So, if you are a born again Christian, okay, Christ has died on the cross, there is no sin that anybody commit, that anybody can commit that is beyond the cross, that is beyond redemption. If murderers can be forgiven, if, uh, you know, people who practice homosexuality can be forgiven. People who practice gayness can be forgiven. They can be redeemed. Who are we to put an obstacle to say that your heart might not change? Says who? By what standards? You see what I'm saying? According to the scriptures, there were people who lived it like this. But because they've been washed, now they're going to live a different lifestyle. This is the issue that we have in the church. Whenever it comes to this particular sin, it always gets a VIP treatment. People are always tiptoeing around it. We don't want to tackle it according to the scriptures, which is wrong, which is wrong. She's not the owner. And there's quite a few people who come like, oh, you know, if somebody, you know, uh, orientation is not sin, if somebody is just attracted, uh, if somebody is, a tr if just you experiencing attraction is not sin, no, according to the scripture, it is sin. It is sin because your desires are not in keeping with what the Bible teaches. So anytime, it doesn't matter, anytime that your desires veils off to what the scripture teaches, you and I are in sin. There is, uh, so pe people always ask, oh, so what are they supposed to do and everything? Like, no, obviously they cannot just wake up like, oh, you know, I'm still having this desire. Like, no, you need to uh, stay in the world. Okay. Uh, keep praying, trust in God. Trust God, you know, let God, you know, remove those things from you and pursue the things that can, um, that's going to help you. Somebody like, okay, you, somebody struggling with uh, alcoholism, right? He's a drunkard. What are they doing at the bar? Oh, I was just at the bar hanging out with my friends. We know like, no, this, you are putting yourself in dangerous territory, in dangerous positions. So no. So if you have to cut loose certain friends, you have to do it. Okay. So these are the things that we are supposed to be doing, okay? You are, you are in pursuit of holiness. Things are just not going to come to you easily because the enemy is always around seeking to devour you. So another scripture that I want to share with you, this is James, right? James 1, 13. Let no one say when he's tempted, I'm being tempted by God. For God cannot be tempted by evil and he himself does not tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is carried away and enticed by, he, by his own lust. When lust has conceived, it gives birth to sin. And when sin is fully matured, it brings forth death. So these are the things uh, that we need to be paying attention but not giving an excuse. So yes, the lady, if that's the situation that her daughter is in, she should be praying for her daughter to be saved. She should be praying for her daughter to come to understand what the gospel is and be saved. And if the daughter, you know, once she is saved, 
she cannot stay in sin. That, that, that's a contradiction. Okay? You cannot stay in a sinful lifestyle and you're calling yourself that you're a Christian. Because then, you know, he who says has no sin, you know, then you're a liar. But these are the things, it should not be so amongst Christians. So I understand that Jackie, uh, given her history, uh, she gets to be asked this question a lot of times. That's fine. She has experienced it, so she can speak on that issue. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. However, just because she has experienced this thing, it does not make her an expert on this issue. Okay? The scripture is, is what we need to go by. So if whatever Jack is saying, if it does not match up with the scripture, we are not to hold to it simply because this, um, this is her history. Okay? Simply because this is her history. Even the stuff that I'm saying. Okay? You, you don't have to take for it. You have to measure it with the scripture. Oh, this is what the scripture is saying. Okay, you know, so you go by what the Bible teaches and then that's it. So, yes, uh, the biggest need of that young girl is to come to know Jesus Christ and stop living in sin. Uh, in sin. And if somebody has stopped living in sin, if somebody has repented, if somebody is regenerated, if somebody has been justified, there is no way their heart is not going to change. Not only that, if their heart is going to change, the things that they'll be doing is going to be different than what they used to do. So that's why we actually say there is no way somebody can say that they are a Christian, quote-unquote, they are a gay Christian. That's a contradiction in terms. Those two things do not go together. You are a Christian, that's who you are. If you're calling yourself you, you are a gay Christian, which means you're not a Christian. Because there is no, there is, we don't put sin uh, before a Christian. Okay, we don't say like, oh, this one is an adulterous Christian. Oh, this one is a, a Christian robber. We don't say that. Oh, this one is a Christian womanizer. We don't say that. Then why do we give, uh, why do we give an excuse when it comes to, quote unquote, this one is a gay Christian? So, this is not the first time, honestly, that Jackie has been, has, has given uh, similar comments. Okay, she's given this comment before. So uh, I'll share with you what she said in the past, okay? Uh, just to show you that this is, this is her thinking when it comes to this issue, okay? So how she, how she responds to this issue is not biblical. She will use scripture, it will sound good, but it, it's, it's, it's not biblical. And she's not the only one. There's quite few people who hold to those views as well, Okay. So uh, let's take a listen to what she said. And every individual is for them to know him and to love him and to serve him. And as they do that, to tell other people to love him and to serve him and to, and to know him. And before long, you got all these people made in the image of God, also imaging God morally. And so I think that's what God wants. Um, it can sound righteous to say God wants you to be straight. But I've yet to read anything in the 66 books of the scriptures that implies that. But I do see a lot of texts and a lot of narratives that is consistently pointing back to the, to the, to the, to the fact that God wants you. Okay, so you see, that's Jackie's position, okay? She's yet to read in the scripture, the 66 books, where God wants you to be, uh, to be straight. Well, if God... Who, Yes, the answer is yes. Yes, God wants you to be straight. That is actually the correct answer because that's what the Bible teaches. If somebody is not straight in their sexuality, what are they? And what does the Bible say about that position? You see what I'm saying? So you cannot be applying the things that are over here because the culture is overwhelmingly. This is what they're saying like, okay, you know, it's fine. You know what I mean? The biblical position, he who created them, created them male and female. Okay, Adam and Eve. This is where we have, right, the template of uh, how things are supposed to be. All right. That is all that I had for you guys today. I hope you find this to be informative to you. Be sure to subscribe to my channel. Be sure to leave me a comment, okay? Let me know what you guys think about how Jackie answered the question. All right, guys. Stay tuned. More coming this week. Until next time, remember to be in the know.